Okay, so here are the three colors that I'm going to use. Purple, this orange, red, reddish color that I hope shows up on blue paper. Um, we have three forms of linear equations. The first one we're talking about today, you guys are already familiar with. It is slope-intercept form. I'm going to make this my slope color. And this is going to be my y-intercept. This equation comes... This equation comes by its name because this is the slope and this is an intercept. It just happens to be the y-intercept. We are color coding on purpose. So on the left, I would like you guys to show that m is equal to slope. And the B in this equation is equal to the y-intercept. So slope-intercept form of these three equations is my favorite. This happens when you work with things that can be changed into different things. This is the one I prefer to change things into. This one is my least favorite. Although it could have been helpful to us in that last question, because I could have found the equation without creating the graph for that question that I was asked about at the end of our review of page 61. So let's open this up. It has point and what in it? So what variable will you expect to see the equation in the equation because there's a slope in there? We're going to expect to see m. So just like before, m is our slope. And just like in this equation, the m comes right after the equal sign. This is a y with a little sub 1, and this is an x with a little sub 1. All that means is they are not like terms with this other x and y. This is just straight up y. This y is this y. And this is straight up x. This x is this x. These two are points or an XY pair that could be a, or are a point on the graph. We'll come back to doing some examples of these after we get our notes on the types of equations we have. This final equation, standard form, does not have an M in it. But we can create M from the numbers that are there. We can find our slope from this equation. What I will tell you is there are capital A, B, and C in this equation. and they are integers. So they could be positive, and integers can also be what? Negative. Mm -hmm. R integers. This is my capital A. Notice I'm doing it in the same color as my slope. This is my capital B.
And this is my C. So standard form is AX plus BY equals C. We are going to glue this into our notebooks, but not until after we do a quick example. And this actually is different from how I did this with second period. We're Right now in our notebooks, if you could all look at mine up here, the last thing we put in here were these half pages of notes on slope intercept form and slope formula. Remember this? On the back of this, don't glue yet because we're going to take some notes, but we're going to end up gluing this here. It's going to go on the left, and on the right side, we're going to do some examples. <laughs> no. Please don't glue it now. Please be taking notes along with me right now. Um, and honestly, I'm kind of making this part up as we go, so I hope these make sense as we continue. Um, we were given two points. In the last question we did together before we started taking these notes, we had negative 2 and negative 6 as an xy pair, and we had 1 and 2. And we were asked in our work last week to make an equation out of that in the section of the book, 2-1, that focuses on slope-intercept form. And so here are my notes. We found that the slope is 8 over 3 because we took these two ordered pairs and we used the slope equation. So we did m is equal to, I'm just redoing some of our work here to capture it on the video, the change in y over the change in x. I took the two y's. I did the second one first because I've done this a lot of times, and I know that this formula is y minus y over x minus x. I know that if I put this second, it's going to become positive because negative 6 with a negative in the formula, and I like working with positives, so that's why I wrote it this way first. 2 plus 6 over 1 plus 2. This is just repeat of our work we did a minute ago, and we got slope is 8 over 3, which was great. And all the other examples I gave you in the book, one of these ordered pairs had 0 in the x place, and that meant that the, the other that ordered pair showed you your y-intercept. This one doesn't. Point slope form, though, can help us find it. So if we take this equation, y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. We now know the slope because we found it. All we need is one point to do this, and we're being given two. So we get to choose which one we want to do. So we're going to rewrite this. Which ordered pair do you guys want us to use? The first one or the second one? Negatives or positives? Okay. Here's one of the things I don't like about this equation. Ordered pairs say what first, x or y? The equation shows y first though. So just be careful that you're making sure you're putting things in the right place. So if I'm gonna use this ordered pair, I'm gonna say y minus two is equal to my slope of 8 over 3 times x minus 1. Go ahead and get that copy down and then we're going to talk about where each of those parts came from. Okay. 
So we know with this equation, it is going to make a line on the graph. We also know it is basically y equals mx plus b, but written in a way more confusing form. What we know about this equation is it's called point slope form because there's a point in it and there's slope in it. The point that we chose is this one comma two. This is my y, this is my x. The equation has negatives in front of both of them. Do you see that there? So that's why when I rewrote this, this two became negative because this negative came from here. Does that make sense? We got our eight over three by using our slope formula and finding eight over three. And then this one is positive, but what was in the equation? So that negative is from the equation. If we had chosen this point, it would have been different. I would have written this as y plus 6 is equal to 8 over 3 x, only if you want another example of how to write it with negatives, plus 2. These are positive because this ordered pair had negatives and the equation has negatives and both of those negatives turn them into positive. thumbs up if you're with me on that. Okay, so now we need to simplify. If we want to turn this mess into slope intercept, the y equals mx plus b we're used to looking at, we need to solve for y. I know you guys don't love literal equations, but this is why we did it. We're going to solve for y. First thing I want to do is take care of that 8 over 3 and distribute, yes? I know I could get rid of the third by multiplying everything by the reciprocal of the third, but I don't want, I'm just going to deal with the 8 thirds. It's not that big a deal. y minus 2 equals 8 thirds x minus 8 thirds. And then what am I going to add to it? Two, because my goal is to get the y by itself. Before I can do that, this is slope. This is a fraction. What do I mean by that? This number means rise over run. This number is where on the graph this is going to end up crossing the y-axis. That's a number on the number line. Do you guys feel the difference there? This will be easier to add this to this too if this is already a mixed number. How do I rewrite 8 thirds as a mixed number? 2 and? I have to remember that this is a negative and so is this. So when I add this, it's going to become a positive, yes? That's also messy. I kind of wish I was writing in pencil, but if I was, you would never see it in my notebook. Yeah, the cursor. Thank you. So I've crossed this out and rewritten it as 2 and 2 thirds, yes? It's a negative 2 and 2 thirds. It's having a positive 2 be added to it. So I'm going to rewrite this equation from left to right. y minus 2 plus 2 is going to give me just y, y. equals 8 thirds x. Why am I not adding the 2 to the 8 thirds x? Because they're not like terms. And then I've got a number here, negative two, two and two thirds plus two is going to give me just negative two thirds. Wow, when I graphed that, it said negative one. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. I was wrong. It's not negative one, it's just above it. Let me find my graph. Here's where I graphed it. This line actually crosses right above my dot. But with rulers, could my line be off just a tiny bit? Yeah. If I was using a thicker pencil or a thinner pen, all of those things make a difference when you're graphing it on your own, true? Yeah. Is negative one close to negative two thirds? Yeah. They're really close together, aren't they? Which one's more accurate, do you believe? My hand-drawn graph or this equation? So do you guys see the value in being able to move these equations between each other? So here is the equation when it is in what we call 
point slope form. We have a point in it and we have slope in it. We have now converted it by solving for y into what form? Slope, slope. intercept. Okay, there's too many fractions in this, so I don't want to use it as my example, but how many of you believe we could turn that into standard form? AX plus BY equals C. I don't see hands. You guys don't believe me yet, do you? <laughs> All right, you're right. I was having you right. Okay, if I wanted to solve this, let's go ahead and do it. Let's turn this into standard form. Look at your graphic organizer we just made. In order to turn it into standard form, we need to have it be AX plus BY equals... That means we need to get the C by itself. And you're all like, there's no C in this equation. I don't know what you're talking about. C is not a variable. C is a integer. integer. This is my C right here. Your y-intercept is also your C because they're the only parts of this equation not attached to x or y. It's just a number. So I want to get the two-thirds by itself. Right now it's a negative two-thirds. That means I need to get this eight-thirds x moved to the left. Let's rewrite it. y equals eight-thirds x minus two-thirds. Who wants to work with whole numbers and not silly fractions now? What are we going to multiply this by then? If I want to get rid of the denominator of 3, I have to multiply by its reciprocal, which is just 3. <clears throat> that means on the left side of my equation, I'm going to have 3y. On the right side, I'm going to have 8x minus 2. Yes, I did that fast because I teach math and I see it, but I want you guys to see it. What is 3 times 8? Oh, I know you're not that asleep. 3 times 8 and 24 divided by 3 is? 8. What is 3 times 2? What is 6 divided by 3? We lost him. He, he wishes he was at the Sounders Parade and not doing algebra right now. The Sounders Parade is right now? I think it's over. It is over. It started at noon. What did they do during school? Okay, what did I just do? Why am I subtracting the 8x? I want to get the x on the, the other side. And now, negative 8x plus 3y equals negative 2. Is, is this the negative 2 truly by itself? Could we leave it a negative? We could. Or, guys, I know we're clipping up to the bell. This is important. Or I could multiply the whole thing by negative 1 and change that first number to a positive. I would get 8x minus 3y equals 2. This is what we call standard form. No practice problems tonight. You're either staying after school today and retaking the test or you're talking to me about when you plan to retake the test.